Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. We are doing, as the title has probably told you, our March reads. Oh, oh I'm not ready. I'm not ready. There you go. Do you want to go first? The first one I'm going to do, I, I listened to it on audio. It's Unreasonable Hospitality, um, which I was really excited about. So it was written by Will Gadara. And he was the manager at 11 Park Madison in the city, which I had eaten at many, many thousands of years ago and loved. But it really goes into his idea of managing a restaurant and how it's so much more than the food and the hospitality they provide. And it tells stories and how 11 Park Madison became one of the top 10 country restaurants in the world. And this is sort of the steps they took to get there. And I really want to go back now because I want to analyze everything that happens, but how the wait staff would have hand signals and stuff, because by the time the, for example, one of the stories is by the time the table was seated and then the host would get to the waiter to tell the waiter what kind of water they wanted, there was a delay. So instead, the host would seat them, ask what kind of water they wanted, give a hand signal. And as they were walking away from the table, the waiter was coming out with the water. Wow. Like, it's crazy. And then, like, the efforts they would go to, like, they were, one waiter was waiting on a table, and it was a family who'd been in New York on vacation, and this was their last night. And he overheard them talking about how the one thing they didn't get, or one of the kids, I guess, the one thing they didn't get was a hot dog on the street. So they went out and bought a hot dog off the street and presented it in like- There the was a scene, did you watch The Bear? Yes. There's that yes. scene with the pizza. Well, I do wonder if The Bear is based on that. I, th I think it. that that seems like too coincidental. Anyway, I used to work in the restaurant industry. I'm always fascinated by it, but it really also made me think just in a lot of ways of, you know, we're not in the hospitality industry, but we have clients and all the extra steps that I find important that we can do for people and just always thinking about what more could we do for our clients and and as a company and things like that but you know for the people within our company too it was a really cool read it was really fascinating yeah it sounds really good yeah Keep it as an audiobook too yeah and he was a really good storyteller as well it was he the author was the narrator <laughs> I like those I think so. Yeah, I do. I like those too, especially in a memoir, because I feel like the emotion always comes through, which doesn't come through if it's a hired narrator. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It was really cool. If you have any interest in the restaurant business, I would strongly, even if, even as a customer of restaurants, I strongly recommend it really is an interesting, fascinating look. Yeah. It sounds really good. What about you? Okay, I read All My Rage. So this actually ended up being the perfect comp for one of my clients' books. So I picked it up and it was, and I love Sabah Tahir. Her book work is so great. And I read her whole other series, which we'll get to next. But I picked this one up and it completely gutted me. It was, I could not put it down. And it was, I, I don't even know how to pitch it without ruining it, but it's two high school friends I don't read a lot of YA, so I thought it was interesting that I picked this up. It was two high school friends that had a big rift, and then something happens. It's all a spoiler. Something happens where their lives come crashing together again, and then everything spirals out of control. It's the most I like this. vague, I generic love those pitch. kinds of stories, though. Yeah, that is the most vague, generic pitch, but truthfully, I think you have to kind of go into this one without expectations. It, it's hard to read. There's a lot of trigger warnings. So I would definitely recommend reading those before you pick this one up. It's award-winning. It's beautiful writing. It's wonderful. Like really, I think required reading. Um, so I highly recommend this. It was really good. Nice. It sounds great. And I do agree with you. I love those. I think I've said this a million times before. I love the stories where there's a falling out and then we're thrown back together forced back together many years yeah. later yeah and it's not even that long later but it's like one of the characters family member it's i don't even want to keep talking no. just read it <laughs> um i'm gonna do this one next believe it or not this was my first riley sager 
Um, I feel like I'm really behind. I feel like last year my reading was terrible. And so I feel like a lot of these books have been sitting around for a while. Um, I get why people love Riley Sager. Again, this is such a cool concept. It's um, this girl who's a home health aide who has been accused of assisting her mother's suicide, assisted suicide when her mother had cancer. Um, so she was put on leave. She it opens up, she gets a new job and it's taking care of this woman who's in her eighties, who was accused of murdering her entire family in their home many years prior. And so it's this mystery of what really happened, honestly, for both women. It's the story of connection. The older woman can't speak except for some sign, yes and no simple sign language. So it's them they need to trust each other or not trust each other. Um, it's the story of a crazy house. It really has all of the tropes. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. But it was really compelling, and I couldn't put this one down. Um, definitely thought it was a great read, and you read it too. I did read it. Riley Sager is a bit hit or miss for me, if I'm yeah. being completely honest. Um, mm -hmm. I did like that one. I still think his second one was the best one, but which name I cannot remember. But I tend to be. I don't always read, as you know, the same author more than once. Yeah, you never do. <laughs> I, I, there's so many authors to read. I just move on to somebody else. There are some exceptions. There are some exceptions. Yeah. Meanwhile, on my end, I read a four book series by the same author of the first book that I read. So we could not be more opposite this month. No. Um, but I read the end uh an ember in the ashes series. I buddy read this with our assistant Madison, who is a great buddy reader, by the way. If you get a chance to buddy read with Madison, you should take it. Um, but this is a four-book series. It is a long ass series. It somehow took me like two weeks though. Um, but it's set in like kind of a Roman-esque world building. Um, the characters are from two very different parts of that world and their lives come crashing together. <laughs> um, but there's like a really interesting magic system. There's Jin, there's ghosts, there's like the spiritual world and every book seems to increase the stakes in a way that I did not think was possible. I do think this was the best one, in my humble opinion. This one was unputdownable. The characters were great. You were just kind of meeting everyone. It's kind of crossover, too. Like, it's YA, but also it's got a lot of adult themes. I think the writing's at a bit higher of a level. Um, but I loved it. It was really good. Four books. Buckle up. Good luck. You know, <laughs> uh, I don't... You, yeah, I don't will, you will grieve characters because oh. Sabatier does not have any qualms in just murdering someone off. Which uh, I do love the carefree murdering of characters. I'm I think yeah, I think it's what makes an author a powerful writer. Yeah, she's you're not afraid to, go to do there. that. She's not afraid to go there at all for anything. Mm -hmm. um, but read the pitch because it will pitch this way better than I did. But it was really good. Well, my next book is very different from what I usually read. Ali Carter, The Blonde Identity. Again, I've never read Ali Carter before. Um, I think this might have been her first adult. And I had picked it up, um, I got it as as a, a, an arc, and I picked it up, and I started to read it, and then I put it down, and then Amanda read it and recommended it, so I picked it up again. I think I read it in a day. It was just wonderful to blow through. It's sort of a, a heist story. It has amnesia in it, all of those crazy things that people say won't sell books, um, but it was just fun and light. and. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a, a quick, quick, fun read. Good popcorn month. And I have to say, Emily Forney loves a heist book. And I have never been a heist book person, but this one might have changed my mind. Hmm. Never say never. Never say never. The last book I read um, was The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This was about a woman in 18th century Cairo who accidentally summoned a djinn. And the djinn informs her very humbly that she actually has magical blood. Um, so he brings her to the city of Daivabad and literally everything she thought was just myth is actually real. And she is one of the last living survivors of a family of jinn who have a very um, 
troubled past in the city. So it kind of reignites a resistance and it was so good. It's long too. Um, and then I read the next two and they only get longer. Um, but that's April's video. Um, but it was really good. I think the first half I was like, all right, where are we going folks? I'm like, let's, let's get there a little quicker. And then the second half absolutely whopped me upside the head. Madison read this and has been getting all of my live texts and did not give me a single warning. They just mm -hmm. enjoyed my pain. Um, but it was really good. So I highly recommend this too. This was probably my favorite of the month. You did a lot of gin reading. I did a lot of gin reading. Yeah. All of, yep. It was really, it was very thematic. I like the magical, just like I like the something bad happens and people are thrown together again. I also do like the uncovering the magical power. Yeah. I I've always liked, you know, witches and powers and blah, blah, blah. So. Yeah. And it was really cool to see, like, I, I've not read much Muslim fantasy, which was yeah. really cool to see a whole new culture explored. Yeah, um, I, I think agree. reading these back to back was really awesome because you got to see the similarities in themes, similarities in, in world building, which was really cool to me. That's awesome. Uh, so more Muslim fantasy. Yeah, definitely. That's it. That's it. That's me. I will try to read something different <laughs> next month because I'm already reading something different. So I'll be coming in. With yeah, I can't just do all of the same in series installments next you month. Can. You can. <laughs> well, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So. Well, if you have any recommendations, put them in the comments for us below. I have a Kindle full of NetGalley books that has been calling my name. So maybe give Jessica recommendations. <laughs> I do need some recommendations. And thank you for those of you who requested that we bring back this series and what we read because um, it's fun to talk book. Healthy peer pressure. I think it yes. gets you reading. Yes. Oh, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you back here next time. Thanks.